It is an honor to introduce my first guest. He's the 44th president of the United States and the author of this best-selling new book called A Promised Land. Here is President Barack Obama. Hi, President Jimmy. Obama. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, coming back to the show. You look great, and I, I, know, I know we don't really have a way of really keeping in touch, but gosh, I really missed you, bud. I missed you, although I, I, I kind of like the whole uh, disheveled, you know, <laughs> sweater. No, no, no. Slightly, I can't. a little bit of stubble look. Now no. you're back behind a desk, <laughs> tie. I can't, you know, for hair you. product. I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm wearing swim shorts, uh, swim trunks under here, but I'm not going to show you that. But yeah, I got to dress up for you. I always think of the time when, uh, when I came to the White House for the 4th of July and I opened up for the Foo Fighters for a, a veterans yeah. party that you had. And I got, I was so nervous, and I got really dressed up there as well. And uh, I was wearing, I think I was wearing a three-piece suit. And it was probably 98 degrees. <laughs> it was really hot. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And Michelle was like, oh, you poor thing. Loosen your tires. I mean, there's sweat coming through my collar. <laughs> and you were like, God, didn't you get the memo? It's a, it's a barbecue. And I go, yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> I was awful. I was sweating so much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, those were so many, uh, it was so many uh, uh, fun memories uh, uh, hanging out with you. And uh, congrats on the book. Uh, here it is. Great cover, by the way. Great Thank look. Thank you. Uh, just crisp, clean. Uh, it's a, uh, it's not a quick read, it, but it is a, you get your money's worth. Look at this. I mean, that's a big book. Uh, you know what? I, I think you can handle it, Jimmy. I really do. Well, I mean, I got up to the part with the pictures, and that's where I, I got really excited. <laughs> uh, I, uh, before we get into everything, how is the family? How's Michelle? How are the girls? You know, Michelle is great. She sends her love. Oh. Uh, the girls have been with us throughout the, you know, pandemic. Uh, yeah, they've been doing remote yep. uh, college. Malia's uh, a senior uh, at Harvard, and, and, and Sasha's a, a sophomore at Michigan. Um, wow, so, that's great. So, uh, you know, as we've talked about parenting, I'm a little bit ahead of you uh, in age. Uh, you go it? through this cycle. They love you. They think you're terrific. You get to around 12, <laughs> they think you're a loser. Yeah. Uh, I got my but first By the roll, time yeah. they come back to you, uh, and in this case, you know, Sasha's now 19, Malia's 22, you know, they suddenly like you again. And they're interesting and they're <laughs> smart and they're funnier than you are. And uh, yeah. so it, it's been a joy to have them around. Uh, you know, I think they have. Obviously, start getting cabin fever, uh, hanging out with us uh, as much as they are, but uh, but I don't mind it. I got my first uh, eye roll uh, the other day, which is pretty interesting. Oh man, how'd you how'd you how'd you handle it? I said I, I couldn't. I really it really broke my heart. I go, you're my number one fan. You can't. You laugh at everything. <laughs> you, every joke I tell you, laugh at. You, 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 I, I, and she's like, uh, no man. Yeah. Wait 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 till wait till they're fourteen. I can't, I can't even, I can't even. Uh, are you, uh, in, in this past four years, I think the last time I, I talked to you, we were talking about what you are most excited about doing, and I think you were like, oh, just even pressing a button on an elevator, or there was like the simplest <laughs> little things that you did not do. Uh, have you done that? Have you taken out the trash? Have you? I Yeah, look, I, I mean, uh, there's a, a bunch of honeydew list items that I have been carrying out. <laughs> Don't seem quite as romantic as they did at the time, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, you know I've driven a couple of times, uh, although in very restricted areas. Uh, Stick shift much or automatic? The, uh, automatic. Yeah. The, uh, Me too. You know I I I, I didn't want to cause you know havoc. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, you know the, the the thing that I haven't been able to do that I thought I was going to be able to do that. that and Michelle knew I was an idiot to think this way, was, uh, I, you know, I thought I could, like, go around and take a walk sometimes. And it turns out that... <laughs> yeah, you're you. I can't do that. <laughs> I, I cannot, <laughs> I, I can't do that. So, uh, although we've we've been doing some bike rides, because you're moving fast enough that even if they... They go, hey, is that... Spot you, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> yeah, You're exactly. gone by that time. Yeah, uh, yeah. probably is even better if you, you, can, you can't even do it alone, I'm going to say, but if it's you and Michelle and the kids, everyone's like... What, 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 what? That's like, that. <laughs> people just freak out. Um, well, the thing about Michelle, when we go bike riding together, uh, uh, 
she's this, uh, she thinks she's uh, in a race, right? I mean, it, <laughs> it, 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 on the Alps or something. And, and she's just powering through and she's about a mile ahead of me. And oh, I'm no. sort of meandering, trying to figure out how to shift gears. Yeah, uh, I'm so, cruising. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it, it, it's, not, it's not that romantic. Uh, <laughs> it's more know, of a workout. I'm, it's more of a workout. Uh, you, uh, for this, you took a deep dive into uh, your journey to the White House and uh, your first few years as president. Uh, uh, you also released an audiobook version, which you narrate, which I think is great. But uh, what I was going to ask you, when it came time to record it, was there any part of you that was kicking yourself for writing such a long book? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you, don't, uh, you don't realize how exhausting it is to, to just sit there and read. And, and it gives you a newfound respect for, you know, professional actors and narrators and so forth. Because after about three hours, I was whooped. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, you look at it, really, we only got through 10 pages? What, what do you mean? Yeah, you're like, hey, um, can, we get a, uh, can we get Tom Cruise <laughs> to do this or something? Yeah, yeah exactly. But, um, it, you know, uh, the goal of my, my book was to tell a story about, uh, yes, policy and you know, the Affordable Care Act and how we got bin Laden and all that stuff, but also uh, to try to pull the curtain back and give people a sense of what it's like for a family to go on this weird journey uh, and, and uh, you know, how Michelle and the girls and, and, and I uh, had to uh, try to hang on to our sense of who we were and normalcy and uh, with highs and lows and, and tensions and stresses yeah. uh, and, and kind of come out of the other end intact. And so, you know, part, part of my goal here was not just to give some dry report, but you know, to describe for people what it's like, you know, the first night you sleep in the White House and you kind of realize, what the heck, how'd I end up here? Or yeah. Do you remember the first thing you saw when you when you actually walked into the White House? Were you like, did you look at like a phone or an old painting or something? And you're like, wait, I'm actually I'm in the White House. All, all of the above. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the interesting thing is, is that you don't, um, you literally are moved in while you're being sworn in. So you haven't. Uh, the Bushes were very gracious. They had given us a tour, but you know, you're not really paying attention. Yeah. It kind of feels like you're in a museum. Uh, you get inaugurated, there are a bunch of balls, uh, you're uh, shaking hands and schmoozing and watching parades, and then you go home, quote unquote, and suddenly you're in this place where uh, the Gettysburg Address is next to, <laughs> in, wow. in the next room. And uh, you, you realize that your life is not going to be the same and, and trying to make sure that you're maintaining perspective. You know, I discuss a lot in the book, uh, you know, one of the greatest accomplishments, I think, of my presidency for both Michelle and me was raising two girls in this very strange environment and yep. them turning out to be these wonderful, not at all entitled, you know, kind, thoughtful people. Yeah. Um, partly because of my mother-in-law who, you know, if she, we were very lucky to have her uh, come stay with us, and uh, you know she'd look at the girls if they were acting up, and she'd say, "What are you guys doing? Yeah, you know, you you know you didn't do anything. Good, <laughs> you're just here for the ride. You need that. Settle yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, and and just, just grounding them. So that uh, I and and part of the reason I wanted to personalize it was so that young people who read it, who are interested in public service, who are interested in government, uh, or or just changing the world." They can kind of see, okay, here, here's somebody who is kind of normal and, and was able to uh, do some important uh, stuff, and maybe I can too, and, yeah. and hopefully inspires them to get involved. Yeah, you, you wrote that, uh, yeah, you want this, this book is for, like, uh, young people in their, in their 20s and uh, who want to change the world. I was going to ask you, uh, are, are you inspired by uh, your own daughters? I, I am. I, you know, they, they and their friends, uh, you know, during... The, uh, this summer after the tragedy of, of uh, George Floyd uh, and the protests and activism, uh, you know, they found ways to get involved that were very smart, 
and thoughtful and, and practical and they got their friends involved. And this whole generation of, of uh, young people coming up are smart, thoughtful, sophisticated, and they really believe all the platitudes about everybody's equal and we should treat everybody fairly and uh, you know, we agree. don't like racism and we don't like discriminating against people because of their sexual orientation. It's second nature to them. And, uh, and there's a, a courage and, and conviction uh, that they bring to it that really is inspiring and, and, and makes me optimistic. You know, it's, it's a matter of us old heads getting out of the way uh, <laughs> and, and making sure we don't break things so badly that by the time they're in charge, uh, you know, it's, it's not too late. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, some good stories in here about you choosing Joe Biden as your vice president, and uh, you do a great job in there describing uh, his, his character. He, he, I've met him a couple of times. He's just uh, very memorable, very charming. Uh, what, what is your favorite memory of working or, or spending time with Joe Biden? Uh, you know, the, the thing about Joe is he genuinely loves people. Everybody, yeah. uh, it, it's it's not a put on. You know, there's some folks, and I'm sure you've seen them in the entertainment industry. Do not name names. Where they're all fun and laughs, you know, in public, and then the cameras you know, off. <laughs> cameras off, and they're yeah, curmudgeons. Yeah. There. Oh yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Joe. Joe is exactly who he appears to be, and um, you know, probably my strongest memories of Joe are when we were campaigning together. Um, you know, I'd work the rope lines after I made a speech, you know, and I'd hug babies and, and yeah. you know, kiss grandmas and, and, you know, we'd go around and shake hands and all this stuff. And I felt like I'd, sh you know, shaken every hand and, and I'm finished with the rope line. And I look back and, like, Joe's just starting. I mean, I think <laughs> he's, he's gotten the life story of the first four people. Yeah. And, uh... So campaigning with Joe meant you were going to be late, uh, <laughs> but because he he really cares about uh, you know hearing people and and letting them know that they're important, and I think that fundamental character of his uh, is exactly what we need right now after uh, so much uh, division and anger uh, and frustration. Just having somebody who likes people, cares about them, knows their struggles. I think that's going to make a big difference, and I think uh, Kamala will bring some of those same values to bear uh, yeah. when they get sworn in. Uh, even even seeing him with, uh, unfortunately, with his boot, the, the, uh, he, he uh, fractured his foot or whatever. <laughs> I, I, it just makes you. I, it, it's not. I'm not. I'm actually going like, oh, man, this is exactly already. I'm more interested in that. <laughs> if that that's if that's a scandal, like I will take that. I just think that's normal. <laughs> that's human. That's you know. That's, that's yeah. what happens with. That's, Normal people, yeah, uh, yeah, playing with their dog. Was so, it uh, was it tough for the the past four years? Was it difficult to sit back and not say anything and go like, I have to respect the presidency. I understand, but because I, I know I'm speaking for a lot of people, where I'm just like, let's let's call Obama right now and get him to go. Hey, <laughs> enough. Hey, yo, <laughs> stop it. You stop it. And he I, <laughs> just yelled him. I. Look, yeah, it was difficult as a citizen. Um, I mean, people have asked me, they asked me even uh, before I left office, how are you going to miss the presidency? I like the fact that, you know, you have eight years if you're lucky, and then it's somebody else's turn, and you pass the baton, and uh, you become a citizen again, and, and because I think that constantly refreshes our democracy. Um, so... Uh, I wasn't one of these people who who had to be dragged off the stage in that sense. Yep. Um, yep. But there's no doubt that let's talk about the pandemic, for example. Right now, we we had written up a pandemic playbook. Um, we had I had experienced uh, a pandemic as I write about in the book uh, with H1N1. Six six months into my presidency, we were uh, dealing with a pandemic. Then we had Ebola. Uh, we had set up a whole structure. We had had a task force in the White House. We had, uh, you know, deployed scientists uh, as an early warning system in countries around the world. 
to ensure their cooperation so that we get uh, ahead of the game if something like this happened. And so when you see all that discarded and ignored just at the time when you need it most, um, and, and knowing the consequences for uh, you know, families uh, across the country, yes, that was frustrating. And uh, you know, people, uh, I think, were surprised by my bluntness maybe during the campaign season. And they said, oh, he must have had all this stuff bottled up. It wasn't so much that there was a bunch of personal uh, outrage bottled up as it was a, a genuine sense that, you know, good government matters. And, and uh, some of the norms and, and you know, uh, practices we use to just make sure that our democracy is civil and functions, um, the kind of transition that I write about that George Bush and Laura Bush extended to us and that we extended to the Trumps. It, it, those kinds of things are important. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes we think of politics as so different from daily life, but it's not. You know, uh, uh, you know, we don't have rules about just being courteous or being thoughtful or trying to hear another person's point of view. We can't police that all the time. It matters how we uh, express our values and interact with each other every day. And that's what we teach our kids. Yeah. And that matters in the White House uh, and in Congress as well. Uh, the, it's obviously been a tough time for our country, but uh, you, you are an optimist, as am I. Uh, and you, you're the yes, we can uh, guy. You're the audacity of hope guy. Uh, what, what keeps you feeling optimistic? Uh, I, I talked about it. Uh, the, the young people that I meet, and, and you know, Michelle and I, uh, are focusing on building up uh, our foundation. And our entire mission is actually to train the next generation of leaders. Um, and you know, the Presidential Center we're building in Chicago will be focused on uh, creating uh, 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 training centers and, and classrooms and convenings of these amazing young people that you meet all around the country who are working on climate change and, and criminal justice reform and uh, you know, educating kids. And when you talk to these young people, not just uh, in America, but around the world, uh, it makes you optimistic. Yeah. It, it gives you a sense that um, there is idealistic, but maybe a little more sophisticated and practical than any previous generation. Uh, there's so much more I want to talk to you about. Uh, more with President Barack Obama when we return, everybody. Uh, uh -huh. so on and on and on. Uh, I said... And it's so